afternoon. Won't you be seated? I have several uh, announcements to make first. I have a statement about the Geneva negotiations for an atomic test ban. These negotiations, as you know, are scheduled to begin early in February. They are of great importance, and we will need more time to prepare a clear American position. So we are consulting with other governments and are asking to have it put off until late March. As you know, Mr. John McCloy is my principal advisor in this field, and he has organized a distinguished panel of experts headed by Dr. James Fisk of the Bell Laboratories. And Mr. Salinger will have a list of the names at the end of the conference who are going to uh, study previous positions that we've taken in this field and also recommend to Mr. McCloy for my guidance uh, what our position will be in late March when we hope the uh, test will resume. Secondly, the United States government has decided to increase substantially its contribution towards relieving the famine in the Congo. This will be done by increasing the supply of cornmeal and dry milk, by adding contributions of rice, and by airlifting a thousand tons of food supplies, seeds, and hospital supplies from a number of African nations to the Congo. It is the intention of the United States government to meet fully the emergency requirements of the Congo for rice, corn, dry milk, and other foodstuffs in our surplus stocks. Assurances have been received from the United Nations that with the help of this program, the flow of supplies will be adequate to relieve the distress. The United States government will cooperate fully to help the United Nations prevent famine in the Congo. Third, I'm happy to be able to announce that Captain Freeman B. Olmsted and Captain John R. McCone, members of the crew of the United States Air Force RB-47 aircraft, who have been detained by Soviet authorities since July 1st, 1960, have been released by the Soviet government and are now en route to the United States. The United States government is gratified by this decision of the Soviet Union and considers that this action of the Soviet government removes a serious obstacle to improvement of Soviet-American relations. Our deepest sympathy and understanding goes to the families of the men of the RB-47 who gave their lives in the service of their country. At the same time, I'm sure that all Americans join me in rejoicing with the Olmsted and McCone families. The families, as well as the men, comported themselves in these trying times in a way which is truly in the best traditions of the military services of the United States. Restraint in these conditions is obviously not easy, but they can be assured that they have contributed in large measure to the final achievement of the objective which we all sought, the release of the men. Yes. Mr. President, this uh, RB-47 case uh, was regarded by the Russians uh, as an overflight, although we took a different position. Uh, in the light of this announcement, what will be your general policy on uh, overflights and uh, on such things as the U-2 case uh, or the U-2 flights? Do you conceive of uh, circumstances which might warrant uh, resumption of such things as the U-2 flight. The Soviet government is fully aware of the United States government views with respect to the distinction between the question of the United States Air Force RB-47 and the incident which occurred over Soviet territory on May 1st, 1960, involving an American U-2 type aircraft. Flights of American aircraft penetrating the airspace of the Soviet Union have been suspended since May 1960. I have ordered that they not be resumed. Mr. President, President yes. there have been reports that uh, Mr. Khrushchev might come to the United Nations General Assembly for the resumption of the disarmament debate, debate uh, sometime in March. If this were to happen, would you welcome a visit by him to Washington or get acquainted with him? I'm not... Uh, heard officially of any proposal by Mr. Khrushchev to come to the United States. I've merely seen newspaper reports, and I feel that it would be 
more appropriate to wait until uh, we had some indication whether Mr. Khrushchev was planning to come to the uh, United Nations. President, yes. President, uh, can you tell us something about uh, what your role was, uh, if you had one, in the release of these flyers? Uh, did this come about as a consequence of some action you took? Well, this matter has been under discussion uh, by the American ambassador and the uh, Mr. Khrushchev on one occasion and representatives of the Soviet foreign ministry since this weekend. The uh, flyers were released uh, at, as of 2 a.m. yesterday morning, but in the plane taking off, there was a uh, tire that was blown, and therefore uh, the plane did not take off. Our last information is that it took off at 5 o'clock our time this afternoon. It will fly to Amsterdam, and then uh, we expect uh, the flyers to be brought to the United States uh, tomorrow afternoon. Yes, sir, Mr. Lawrence. Uh, uh, Mr. President, one of your task forces recommended that you resist any early move toward general disarmament negotiations until a firm and fixed U.S. policy could be worked out. Uh, what is your reaction to that report, and how much time do you think it might take to get a firm, fixed U.S. position? Well, Mr. McCloy has a responsibility over the area of disarmament as well as nuclear testing. He has, as I've said, to set up this uh, committee, advisory committee on nuclear testing. We expect to uh, also get the American position clearer on general disarmament. There is not the same uh, deadline that we've been facing on the nuclear testing, where we were supposed to resume in early February. But I can state that uh, this was a matter which was discussed early this week by the Secretary of Defense and the Secretary of State and Mr. McCloy and we are uh, preparing uh, a clarification of American positions on disarmament. I think Mr. Morgan had stood up. Uh, Mr. Mr. Morgan, and then uh, you. Mr. President, what more can you tell us about the long conversation that Ambassador Thompson had with Mr. Khrushchev, including whether the tone of that conversation was anywhere near as friendly as that of the messages that Khrushchev has sent you? I would say the tone was friendly, and uh, as a result of the conversations, as I've said, uh, the decision was made to uh, release the flyers. But the uh, conversations were uh, conducted in an atmosphere of uh, civility. Uh, could you give us any indication at all as to what other subjects were taken up in addition to the release of the RB-47 flyers? No, I think that uh, I'll have to stand on my previous statement. President, yes, ma'am. Uh, does your administration plan to take any steps to solve the problem at we are, uh, the Congress, of course, uh, enacted legislation which placed very clear responsibility on the executive branch to protect the right of voting. I am extreme, I supported that legislation. I am extremely interested in making sure that every American is given the right to cast his vote without prejudice to his rights as a citizen. And therefore, I can uh, state that this administration will uh, pursue uh, uh, the uh, problem of providing that protection uh, with all vigor. Mr. President? Yes? Uh, sir, would you please tell us how it was possible for you to do by executive order what Mr. Benson always told us was impossible for him to do without more legislation? I refer to the order expanding the distribution of food to the unemployed and giving them more variety in the diet. Well, I would not uh, attempt to uh, comment on Mr. Benson. I don't think there's any question of our rights to issue the executive order under the authority given to us by uh, the Constitution and by uh, legislative action. I think we're within our rights. It is a judgment as to what is the best use to make of the funds that are available. The funds are quite limited. The diet which is being provided for the people who are unemployed is still inadequate. But nevertheless, we have used the funds that are available uh, to the maximum. And uh, I don't think there's any question that we were within our rights. Uh, yes? Sir, could you uh, tell us uh, how and when you learned that these flyers were going to be released? I uh, learned as a result of the uh, conversations which Ambassador Thompson had with the uh, Soviet officials. And therefore, it has, uh, we uh, were informed as to the uh, date that they would be released, the time, uh, yesterday. Yes, uh, Ms. Means? Mr. President. 
Uh, there's been some apprehension about the instantaneous broadcast of presidential press conferences such as this one, uh, the contention being that an inadvertent statement, uh, no longer correctable as in the old days, could possibly uh, cause some grave consequences. Do you feel there is any risk, or could you give us some thought on that subject? Well, it was my understanding that the statements made by the by President Eisenhower were uh, on the record. They may have been a clarification that could have been issued afterwards, but uh, it still would have demonstrated, it was, still would have been on the record as a clarification, so that I don't think that the interests of our country are, uh, it seems to me they're as well protected under this system as they were under the system uh, followed by President Eisenhower. And this system has the advantage of providing more direct communication. <laughs> yes, Ms. Smith. Well, at the, uh, there, to take the last part first, we are not considering uh, such a step uh, at the present time. I may say that uh, the United States uh, is interested, and I think that uh, uh, this administration is extremely interested in uh, movements in Latin America or in Central America or the Caribbean which provide a better life for the people. And uh, if uh, American interests uh, may be damaged by those movements or revolutions or whatever term you want to use, uh, we feel that this should be a matter that should be negotiated. What we are, of course, concerned about is when these movements are seized by uh, external uh, forces and uh, directed not to the improving the welfare of the people involved, but towards uh, imposing an ideology which is alien to this hemisphere. That is a matter of concern, particularly when uh, that... Uh, Intervention takes the form of uh, uh, military support, which threatens uh, the security and the peace of the Western Hemisphere. Now, uh, I'm hopeful that uh, governments will be established uh, throughout all of Latin America, and governments which are established will, and, and, and I think uh, nearly all of them do, share the same view that we have to provide uh, in this hemisphere a better life for the people involved that we are interested in that, that we are concerned about it, that American policy will be directed towards that end. But we are also a concern that in the name of that peaceful revolution, when it's seized by uh, aliens for their purposes, it's very difficult for the United States to carry on happy relations with those countries. So in answer to your question, we have no plan at present to resume diplomatic relations with, the Soviet, with uh, Cuba because of the... Uh, factors which are involved in that island. Right, right. Yes, Mr. President, President, you've said in the past, sir, that the president should be in the thick of the political battle, and I wondered, sir, if you could tell us what part you're playing in the effort to expand the Rules Committee and whether you feel your domestic program, whether the success of your domestic program in part depends on expanding the Rules Committee. Well, the Constitution states that each ho house shall be the judge of its own rules, and therefore uh, Mr. the Speaker of the House, Mr. Rayburn, has been extremely anxious that uh, the House be permitted to settle this matter in its own uh, way. But I, it's, it's no secret that uh, I uh, would strongly believe that uh, the members of the House should have an opportunity to vote themselves on the uh, programs which we will present. Uh, that, I think, is uh, the reason the people selected them uh, to go to the House of Representatives and to the Senate and to selected me as president so that we could present programs and consider programs and vote on programs which... Uh, uh, are put forward uh, for the benefit of the country. Now, I feel that it would be, I'm hopeful that uh, whatever judgment is made by the members of the House, that it will permit the members to vote on these bills. This is a very difficult time in the life of our country. Many controversial measures will be presented, which will be in controversy and will be debated. But at the end, the majority of the members of the House, the majority members of the Senate, I hope will have a chance to exercise their will. And that a small group of men will not uh, uh, attempt to prevent uh, the members from finally letting their judgments uh, be known. For example, we have a housing bill which is going to come before the Congress this year. We have an aid to education bill. We have a, a legislation which will affect the income of farmers. Shouldn't the members of the House themselves and not merely the members of the Rules Committee have a chance to vote on those measures? But the responsibility rests with the members of the House, and I would not attempt in any way to infringe upon that responsibility. I merely give my view as an interested citizen. Yes. <laughs> yes? Are there any plans being made to implement the recommendations in the Voorhees report on the Cuban refugee problem? And secondly, do you plan to appoint somebody to continue Mr. Voorhees' work? 
We are uh, considering uh, the uh, recommendations of Mr. Borries and the whole problem of the Cuban refugees, uh, but I, I don't have any statement to make on it at this time. Mr. Yeah? Yeah? Uh, Mr. President, what is the official government position in regard to the Portuguese seized ship? <laughs> Can the Navy board it if and when it makes contact? Well, I, I believe that the uh, location of the uh, ship has been determined. And uh, the, uh, uh, perhaps we could give the location uh, of it. There is a, and uh, at the present time, the instructions are for the Navy to uh, continue to uh, its accompaniment of the ship. The Santa Maria has been located by Navy P-2V aircraft, and the position is approximately 600 miles north of the mouth of the Amazon River. It is headed on a course of 117, speed uh, of, uh, a speed of 15 knots, and the exact position at 10 minutes after 4 was 10-35 north, 45-42 west. It will be trailed by aircraft and to picked up by the destroyers of our African task force. Now, uh, there are Americans involved, and their lives are involved, but there is a... Uh, uh, we do not uh, have we're not given any instructions to the Navy to carry out uh, any uh, boarding operations, though, of course, we are concerned about the uh, lives of the Americans involved, and also because uh, we are concerned because the ship uh, belongs to the, uh, a country with which the United States has friendly relations. Uh, in consequence of Mr. Khrushchev's apparent indication last weekend, the willingness to release the American flyers, <coughs> Have you sent any communication to him through Ambassador Thompson or otherwise? Uh, well, uh, have I sent a message since the release of the flyers? Since uh, his communication to us, to Ambassador Thompson. Well, we've had several exchanges with uh, the Soviet authorities. Not, I do not believe that one uh, has taken place since the release of the uh, prisoners, but uh, that's partially because uh, there has been this delay about their leaving Moscow. Ms. Craig? Mr. President, there is meeting here now a nationwide group of labor, agriculture, and industry which wants to abolish or restrict the Reciprocal Trade Agreements Act. They say that it robs us of gold, robs American workers of jobs. What is your position on such a proposal? Well, I think that uh, their meeting here is well within the, uh, their uh, rights and uh, as citizens of the United States, and uh, I think that uh, we should listen to their views. This is a matter of great concern. I do think we should be conscious of the fact, of course, that the balance of trade has been substantially in our favor in the last year. But we are continually concerned about those imports which adversely affect an entire industry or adver and adversely affect the employment of a substantial number of our citizens. The uh, present laws, peril point and escape clause, of course, all uh, take those matters into consideration. But I'm glad to have them here. I'm glad to have them express their views. I think the Congress should consider their views carefully. And I hope that in their consideration, they will consider the whole problem of trade. And I do think we should realize that the balance of trade has been in our favor, and the gold flow would have been substantially worse if uh, we had not had this favorable balance of trade. Uh, we go over here. Mr. President, in uh, relation to the gold flow problem, the uh, outgoing administration has ordered a cutback in the number of American military and civilian dependents stationed abroad uh, in the so-called hard currency nation. The day before your inaugural, the outgoing defense secretary advised the your incoming defense secretary uh, uh, in a matter of urging him that relief should be sought as soon as possible because of what the outgoing defense uh, secretary turned the adverse effect of the order on the morale of the military and their families. Uh, have you had a chance or make up your mind in that position, sir? Mr. Uh, McNamara and Mr. Dillon have discussed uh, uh, the effect of this uh, order on uh, military morale, our military strength, the rate of reenlistment. It's really a question of determining what alternative steps can be secured which would be less harmful, but which would uh, protect uh, the flow of gold. I do expect to... Uh, make some reference to this matter of gold outflow in the State of the Union address. I will send, uh, within a two-week period after the State of the Union address, a message to the Congress dealing with the 
gold outflow and our recommendations for uh, meeting it. And we will, uh, at that time, uh, come to some judgment as to whether a more satisfactory method of protecting our gold uh, could be secured than uh, providing for the uh, return of the families of Americans serving abroad in the military. I will say that uh, our study uh, so far has convinced us uh, that uh, the dollar must be protected, that the dollar can be protected in its present value. The exchange controls are not essential, but it is a most serious problem, and uh, it will be the subject of a message to the Congress. The state of New York gave you one of your handsomest majorities in the 1960 election campaign, but now the Democrats of New York are rather bitterly divided over leadership. As the leader of the Democratic Party nationally, are you going to take some steps to try and heal the splits in New York? Well, the um, people in New York, uh, the Democratic organizations uh, in New York who are interested in the success of the Democratic Party, they have to make their judgments as to what kind of a party they want to build there. I have asked Mr. Bailey, to, uh, the new chairman of the Democratic Party, to lend a helping hand in attempting to uh, alleviate some of the distress. <laughs> Yes. President, sir, do you have any plans for quick federal aid for the unemployed? I will. Uh, we are going to send a message to the Congress uh, right after the State of the Union address on uh, what steps we think the government could profi profitably take to uh, provide the protection for the unemployed and also to stimulate the economy. On the immediate question, I will discuss that in the State of the Union address on Monday. Uh, Mr. President, uh, now that the Soviets have uh, released the R-47 flyers, would you estimate for us the chances of you meeting with uh, Khrushchev? Yes, there is no re relationship, nor has there been in the discussions between the two uh, matters. And therefore, I have no, uh, there's been no change in my previous statement that there are no plans at, at the present time for meeting with Mr. Khrushchev. Uh, yes. Mr. President, uh, will you tolerate the continued abuse of executive privilege to suppress information which is needed by Congress? For instance, now that you are president, will you direct the USIA to give the Senate Foreign Relations Committee those prestige polls which you urged the previous administration to make available during the campaign? Well, let me say that I would have uh, no objection at all to uh, polls or uh, the, at least the results of the polls being made available and I'll be delighted to check in and see what we can do about uh, making it available to the Senate Foreign Relations Committee or the House Foreign Relations Committee if uh, they would like them. Well that's a, a statement really not uh, completely a question uh, in, uh, in uh, well, that's why I stated that I thought that it would be well to release these polls, and that's why I said I'd be glad to release these polls. Now, if other matters come up, we'll have to make a judgment whether it is an abuse or whether it is within the uh, constitutional uh, protections given to the executive. And I would uh, hope that we can, within the limits of national security, make available information uh, to the press and to the people. And I do think that it would be helpful to release uh, uh, the polls which were discussed last fall. Uh, uh, Secretary Salinger said today, indicated today, there might be a need for a tightening of information on national security. Uh, doesn't the policy of deterrence require that the enemy have knowledge of our strength and the ability of our intentions, the ability to carry them out, and wouldn't they risk a possible miscalculation by tightening up information? Well, I think that uh, the enemy. Uh is informed uh, of our uh, strength. I think Mr. Salinger in his statement today at lunch uh, indicated his judgment based on his experience so far that uh, there had been very ample information given so that the enemy can make a determination as to our strength. I uh, am anxious that we have a maximum flow of information, but there quite obviously are some matters which uh, involve the security of the United States. And uh, it's a matter on which the press and the executive uh, should attempt to reach a uh, responsible decision. I could not uh, make a prediction about what those matters will be, but I, I think that all of us here are aware that there are some matters which it would not be well to discuss at particular times. So that uh, we'll just have to wait and try to work 
together and see if we can provide as much information as we can within the limits of national security. I do not believe that the stamp national security should be put on mistakes of the administration which do not involve the national security. And uh, this administration would uh, welcome any time that any member of the press feels that we are artificially invoking that cover. But I must say that I do not hold the view that all matters uh, and all information which is available to the executive should be made available at all times, uh, which, and I don't think any member of the press. So it's a question of trying to work out a solution to a sensitive matter. Mr. 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 Ben Oken. Um, in the past two days, the Secretary of State, Dean Russ, has issued statements, one with your name on it, to the effect that this country wants to return to quiet private diplomacy. Could you give us some idea of the meaning behind this, Mr. President? Are you trying to suggest that Chris Jarre would like to resort to this for the time being without offending him or making him go off the cordial path he's on at the present time? Uh, would you... Uh, the last part of that, if... Well, are you trying to suggest to Mr. Khrushchev, by the tone of these... by what you're saying in these statements, that you don't want a summit meeting now, you'd like to go through private channels, and trying to do this without offending him or getting him off the cordial path he's on now? Well, I would just say, without uh, accepting the uh, question uh, completely as a premise, I would say that uh, the Secretary of State is anxious to explore with interested countries what chance we have of lessening world tension, which is, in some areas of the world, is quite high tonight. And uh, therefore, there are occasions when uh, uh, traditional exchanges between uh, diplomats and the countries involved are in the national interest. And that, I think, is what Mr. Rusk is directing his attention to. And uh, I'm hopeful that from those more traditional exchanges, we can perhaps uh, find a greater common ground. Yes. Uh, sir, do you favor Senator Humphrey's uh, suggestion that we send surplus food to Red China, to the UN or CARE or some similar organization? Well, I'd say uh, two things. First, the uh, Red China, the Chinese Communists, are exporting uh, food at the present time. Some of it to uh, Africa, some of it uh, has gone, I think, to Cuba. And uh, therefore, uh, that is a factor in the, their needs for food from abroad. Secondly, we've had no indication from the Chinese Communists that they would welcome any offer of food. I'm not uh, anxious to offer food if it's regarded merely as a propaganda effort uh, by the United States. If there is a desire for food and a need for food, the United States would be glad to consider uh, that need, regardless of the source. If people's lives are involved and there's a desire for food, the United States will consider it carefully. I do say that in this case, however, there are these examples of food being exported during this present time or recent history. And secondly, there has been a rather belligerent attitude expressed towards us in recent days by the Chinese Communists, and there is no indication, direct or indirect, private or public, that they would respond favorably to any action by the United States. Mr. President. Yes? Mr. President, the task force report on faith has been criticized as partisan opinion. There also has been criticism that the report was made without any contact with NASA officials, without any attempt at liaison during the transition period. And there is concern that no one has so far been <coughs> named to head the agency. Could you comment on these charges, sir? Well, I don't, uh, the uh, task force is, uh, was free to make the kind of report that in their best judgment uh, the events called for. The task force was made up of men of broad experience in this field. Uh, I think it was really a blue ribbon panel. They presented their views. Uh, there, uh, I don't think anyone's suggesting that uh, their views are necessarily, in every case, the right views. I am uh, hopeful. We have appointed an acting director, and I'm hopeful that before the week is out, we will have a uh, director of NASA. Yes, Mr. Bell. Mr. President, Mr. President you have directed your departmental heads to take a new look at the Eisenhower budget. I wonder, in, uh, with indications that you may have some partial revisions of this budget, can you now say whether you hope or expect to live within the 80 billion, 900 million spending figure which your predecessor laid down? I would, uh, I'm a, that study of the budget is now going on and I couldn't give you an answer yet. We haven't finished our study. Mr. President, Mr. President, 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 
your inaugural address was unusual in that you dealt only with America's position in the world. Why, Mr. President, did you limit yourself to this global theme? Well, because the issue of war and peace is involved, and uh, the survival of uh, perhaps the planet, uh, possibly our uh, system, uh, and uh, therefore this is a matter of uh, primary concern to the uh, uh, people of the United States and the people of the world. Secondly, I represent a, a new administration. I think the views of this administration are quite well known to the American people and will become better known in the next month. I think that uh, we are new, however, uh, as far on the world scene, and therefore I felt that there would be some use in informing uh, countries around the world of our general view on the questions which uh, face the world and divide the world. Mr. President, yeah. uh, Mr. President uh, you have spoken of the uh, situation where there are crises in the world now. One of these places is Laos. Do you have any hope that a political settlement can be negotiated there? Well, as you know, the uh, British government has uh, presented to the Soviet Union, and to the best of my information, an answer has not been received by the British of a proposal to reestablish the uh, International Control Commission. Uh, that uh, we ought to know uh, shortly whether there's any hope that that commission can be reestablished. As to uh, the general view on uh, Laos, this matter is of great concern to us. The United States uh, is anxious that there be established in Laos a peaceful country, uh, a country, an independent country, not dominated by either side, but uh, concerned with the uh, life of uh, the people within the country. We are uh, anxious that that uh, situation uh, come forward, and the United States is using its influence to see if that independent country, peaceful country, uncommitted country, can be established under the present very difficult circumstances. Mr. President, in discussing uh, with the Soviet Union the release of the RV-47 flyers, did we also take up with uh, Mr. Khrushchev uh, the fate of Francis Gary Power, the U-2 pilot, and uh, the 11 uh, flyers that were missing from the C-130 that uh, was shot down inside the Armenia in 1958? The uh, matter of the 11 flyers was discussed, and uh, uh, Mr. Khrushchev, uh, and the Russians, rather, have stated that uh, uh, that their previous public statements on these flyers uh, represent their view on the matter, that the newspaper magazine story, which came from an, written by an Eastern German, did not represent uh, the facts. So that that would, uh, on the matter of Mr. Powers, we have not discussed him because, at this time, because it, he is in a different category than the flyers uh, that were released. One was an overflight and the other was a flight of a different nature. Yeah. Uh, did the Russians ask any quid pro quo, or did we make any concessions to them in exchange for the release of these flyers? They did not. If not, how do you account for this remarkable turnabout in their relations with us? We did not. Uh, we, the statement which I have made is the statement which the United States uh, government uh, put forward on this matter, which I read to you earlier in regard to overflights. Uh, I would not attempt to uh, make a judgment as to why the Soviet Union chose to release them at this time. I did say in my statement to uh, Mr. Arrowsmith that uh, this had removed a serious obstacle in the way of uh, peaceful relations between the Soviet Union and the United States, and I would judge that uh, they desired to remove that serious obstacle. They accepted a reassurance of no more overflights as uh, an exchange. Uh, it is a fact that I have ordered that the flights not be resumed, which is a continuation of the order given by President Eisenhower in May of this year. Mr. President, Mr. President your own election has stimulated renewed uh, proposals for electoral reform. Do you have any objection to changing the present method of electing presidents, or do you favor any of the proposals? Well, I'm, uh, I do have uh, some thoughts on it. One that, uh, first place, uh, having been through the experience in 56, I think it was, of an attempt to substantially change the Electoral College, it's my judgment that no such change 
can secure the necessary support in the House, the Senate, and in the states of the Union. The area where I do think they, we perhaps could get some improvement would be in providing that the electors would be bound by the results of the uh, state elections. I think that that is a, would be a useful step forward. The electors, after all, the people vote. They assume that the votes are going to be cast in a way which reflects the judgment of a majority of the people of the state. And therefore, I think it would be useful to have that automatic and not set up this independent group who could vote for the candidate who carried the state or not, depending on their own personal views. That would be the first thing. Secondly, I'm hopeful that the Congress would consider the suggestions made, I think, first by President Theodore Roosevelt and later by uh, Senator Richard Newberger of having the national government participate in the financing of national campaigns because uh, the present system is not satisfactory. Perhaps it would be useful uh, to uh, go into that in more detail later and because I do think it's the most important subject. But I would say for the present that uh, this matter of the electors would be an area where I think we could usefully uh, move. <laughs> Mr. Roberts? On a related subject, without being morbid, have you given any consideration to the problem which President Eisenhower resolved with his vice president? That is the problem of the succession in case of injury, illness, or some incapacitation. Have you thought of uh, some agreement with the vice president such as your predecessor had? Yes, well, I haven't engaged. I haven't. Uh, developed that uh, at this present time, though I uh, do think that uh, President Eisenhower's decision was a uh, good one, and I think it would be a good precedent. Nothing's been done on it as yet, but uh, I think it would be a good matter on which we uh, could proceed on. Thank you. No, fine. <laughs>